when Rob told me he was going to take on the big supermarkets, I thought a bloke was crazy. Grande coyone. <laughs> big balls. <laughs> to do something like that. This stuff here probably wouldn't be accepted in the supermarkets. So. No, that's right. Yeah, and with a bit of leaf. One of the big advantages of community supported local agriculture is that it helps change the bigger system. Because when people don't demand food out of season, it won't come. We're getting really disenchanted with the food we're eating and why were we eating food that was from a different country when we know it can be produced 100 k's from our house, if not 50 k's. So from a climate change perspective, food is a big part of the problem in terms of agriculture and all the emissions from getting it from farm to the house. Oh, oh another one. And through the model of CSA or community supported agriculture, it can be a part of the solution. Small one just for one person. And it's eat seasonally, eat locally, and have more connection to your food than we currently have. My experience coming from fourth generation dairy farmer, I purchased the farm off mum and dad, and then we had falling milk prices, rising costs and drought, and as a result of that, I lost the farm. I set up Food Connect because I looked at the whole food system and I thought, wow, it's, the distribution is where the power is, and that was where I thought, well, if I'm going to do anything about it, I need to get involved at that point. CSAs take many different shapes and forms. I'm fortunate enough to travel around the country and I see lots of them. A lot of the citrus is coming in. Food Connect is based in Brisbane. It's basically built around the community backing farmers within an agreed distance of could be three or 400 kilometres, and creating the support for the farming community by the community. So now we're just doing half, half the cabbage. cabbage. Yeah, that's yes. a good idea. Yeah. It's a bit more manageable. It's very much demand driven rather than supply driven. So the customers put their orders in, we ring up the farmers, tell them how much we want. Monday morning that produce arrives, um, and then Tuesday we pack it into boxes and it's in their homes on Tuesday afternoon. Right, Oak, what else have we got going in here? I thought it was important to offer support to farmers. We were often hearing of farmers actually having to shut up shop. And so this way the farmer was being paid up front and we had it within 48 hours of it even being harvested. So it's getting away from the idea that it's okay that a kumquat can have flown for three days around the world at massive expense to end up on my table. Food's coming in from Belgium. I mean, yeah, we produce heaps of food. My name is Franco Sensig. I live just out of Brisbane. The farm here is on six acres. It's a biodynamic and organic farm. So that entails all natural inputs. Love it. Connection to the soul of Mother Earth. <laughs> you can't go wrong. <laughs> My mother and father were like a lot of people after the Second World War. They came over from Italy and they purchased this place back in 1950. And this used to be the salad bowl of Brisbane. So I'm the last one here. If you look around, you see all these houses. The Redlands now, instead of growing vegetables, they grow houses. Yeah, Community-supported agriculture that gives me an avenue to do what I'm doing. That's the connection, is that he's got this idea, the community's backing it, and I'm backing all of them. The national average of kilometres travelled by food today is around about 1,200. By supporting a local food system, you bring it down, well, in our case, it's about 140 kilometres. Hey, Franco. Hey, Roberto, come and stay. <laughs> How are you, mate? Hey, <laughs> good fellow. Connecting me to the consumer, to the people. So you know these people know you, and they thank you. Yeah, it makes you want to get up in the morning. Last one. All right. The farmer's produce arrives. It then gets packed into boxes seasonally, and then they get delivered to community pickup spots for all the customers to come to, and those community pickup spots are called City Cousins. So being a City Cousin is really fantastic because you do get to know all of your customers in the local area pretty well, start to feel the, the interconnection between everybody. City Cousins reduced food miles because we did our research into how many miles people were driving to get to supermarkets and back again, and we realised that people are only travelling, you know, less than a kilometre to get to a City Cousin. And when we heard about this, it just ticked so many boxes for us. Just knowing that we were getting fresh food that wasn't travelling a really long way. Oh, fantastic. We did get strawberries this week. Yeah, they're good this week. Good. And beans. Yes. 
always a good surprise. There were definitely challenges to adapting to the box system because I'm a busy working mother. Who's going to unpack the fruit for me today? I'd have a set list of things I'd buy from the supermarket and all of a sudden when you're eating seasonal, you're getting food in your box that you're not used to cooking with. We've been supermarketed convenience. I'm told that convenience is good, so let's just get it. And that's what CSAs are up against. There was an adaption process to that, but all of a sudden now we do just chop up fresh spinach in our meal. I would have never have done that before because we are loath to waste that food because we know that food has come from a person. What? This came from Branko's, the barefoot farmer. Putting our face to food, for me, is the future. Then we build connection. When we build connection, that's love. And when we love the planet, we'll change the way we connect with it forever. And we'll teach that to the generations that come.